Welcome back to Showbiz Insider, your entertainment news roundup. So next up, we have our pick of the season's best international fashion newcomers. That's from across all of the UAE's runways and platforms. Now, recent design debuts included fresh contemporary brands and cutting edge collections. These are the faces to watch. First up, Nafsika Scorti debuted her latest collection, Temporary Security. Juxtapositioning the ideas of youth and freedom with political undertones, she subverts familiar pieces with subtle design features. Camouflage prints designed with a kind of military made beautiful edge. So it's your first time at Fashion Forward. It's first time, yeah, yeah. And it's just three years since you graduated from Central St. Martin. Uh, three years since we graduated, one year since we, since we launched. And tell me, how would you describe your collection? It's got a little bit of political undertones. Sports um, we really wanted to do something that was uh, about being anti, like anti-passive behavior. And we were imagining like a really fashionable protest where we were fighting the good fight. And uh, we just want something with a bit of grit, you know. Right. I feel like there's so much conflict around us. I really wanted to translate it into something positive. Tell me about the design features. Are there certain design features that really characterize the looks and really? Um, yeah, we were looking a lot of military jackets. I look a lot of menswear, so a lot of every lot of like oversized t-shirts, like um, loose pants. Uh, the dresses are always sexy because they're sexy. Um, we looked there was a bit of camouflage. Oh yeah, we started off with the camouflage mm. print and we saturated it into like, we took the classic one and then we tried to turn it into like lots of different colors and like making military beautiful. Right, okay, and so that is yeah. the ethos, making military beautiful. Yeah. Now I know you trained with Marquesa, what was your experience working there? Oh, it's amazing. Like it just shows you that like if you put enough time, something beautiful can come what out What did you it. learn from those guys? Um, fabrics, colors, embroidery, it was really good. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Sabatak from Baghdad is becoming known for her wearable art. Her Nomads of the World Haute Couture collection was nominated for the prestigious Franz Molnar Prize and is showcased at the Central Museum. Inspired by culture and art, her designs are a combination of unique silhouettes, hand-printed silk skirts, high-neck separates and 3D texturized tops. To funky drum and bass beats, she brings back denim and backcombed hair. So the inspiration was uh, uh, the Cubist poetry, that's uh, the name of the design, uh, the concept. And the concept, it comes from like the Cubism. That's where it's from, so actually. Okay, and were there some particular design features? Because I know that Sabah normally focuses on nomadic kind of knife style, culture and art. What are her general inspirations for her work? It's like she used a lot of denim and a lot of handwork. So it, all the fabric that's made uh, for the denim, it was handmade. So it's not like a normal denim. So she made it and then made it to, into a design. And now I know she does a lot of work with museums and art galleries as well. Why do you think it's important for her to focus on that side, like bringing fashion and art together? Um, it's like she uh, loves to do something else, something new. She uh, Usually she doesn't make like a normal clothes she uses on the streets. Uh, but it's like a very uh, difficult design, a very um, new design and a, with a new technique. So uh, that would happen and that's why she went to the museum uh, for her pieces. Recent talent scouting initiatives such as Vogue's What's On Next Dubai mainly focused on emerging designers from the Middle East, Asia and Africa. The project covered three categories, that's women's wear, men's wear and accessories. Abrima Awaya created new label Studio 189 with actress Rosario Dawson. That's with the mission of using fashion as an agent of social change in Africa. How do you really, um, really show that spirit of Ghana in your work? Is it through the colors? I think it's through the colors. I think it's through the textures. And I think it's through the whole the attitude. You know, it's just like you really can feel it. And we have these amazing earrings that are brass and gold that come from Mali. And you just see all these like little, very particular hand pieces of work, but that are, that are done differently. Just in terms of the production. So this is all happening in Ghana. If you can take me through um, what we can imagine seeing, because obviously like the production distribution chain is a little bit different to what we used to. Well, for example, if we're working with fabrics, you can imagine seeing an amazing woman in a small village and she's she's um, taking wax hot wax and we draw something like maybe a triangle or maybe a special symbol we have this symbol it's called um, 
help me and let me help you. It's in a traditional West African symbol of a collaboration. So it means that we work together. New menswear label Don't Le Man is about breaking fashion boundaries for men with a very personal story of childhood trauma. His collection ethos is of a journey without a destination. So the menswear fashion labels are used uh, antique batik uh, fabrics and those are the ones that I use for my clothing so I make a classic clothes suiting for men. I got really attached to the fabric. It's for really personal reason. Uh, I, I, five, I, age of eight, five, my mom just abandoned me at the bus stop. And uh, since then, I've grown up from different families and families. So at that moment, I was looking for the print that my mom worn to have a memory of her. So I've been collecting, collecting fabric, collecting scores, 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 scores. And then finally, I, after I've grown up now, I'm a grown up man, I decided because I never met her again. And uh, I decided to use my past and do something beautiful with it. And after 16 years working alongside Donatella Versace, Lee Wood decided to pre launch his own unisex brand, L72, during Milan Fashion Week. A new concept of elegance, it combines minimalism with streetwear. The colourful jumpers, tutu skirts and tied bow jacket features could only be made in Italy. Austrian Arthur Arbusser also creates in Italy and launched his women's wear label at Milan Fashion Week. He went on to win the Vogue Italia and Alta Roma competition, who's on next? The inspiration this time round was uh, a French painter, Balthus. So he is obsessed with cats and young girls. So it's very young this time and very feminine and very girly. Normally my clothes are quite androgynous and streamlined and this time round we wanted to make it a little bit more um, romantic. So um, there's a lot of print, a lot of florals. Um, it's very um, soft and delicate in a way. And um, there is a mix of everything, a lot of knitwear, a lot of um, silk, a lot of cotton. There's a bit of... Um, yeah, it's a complete collection. And from Italy to China, Shua Li had previously worked with leading designers Alexander McQueen and Anya Hindmarch. Known as the knitwear specialist, her modern monochrome and quirky character designs have graced the catwalks of London, Hungary and now Dubai. Global fashion newcomers bringing international flair to the Emirates. So great to have some new fashion designers discovered by global talent scouting agencies. But don't go anywhere guys, because next up we witness the impossible and go backstage of the world's best-selling magic show.